And I can already see in the comments, these are technically garbage. This was a roll of film that should have been thrown in the crash. I took it. I took the challenge. I'm trying to make something out of it. And so it's not about the end result. It's just all about the process. All right, well, welcome back to another episode of Willow Develop. I'm Jerry from the Cellular Collective. And like I said, we're gonna be testing out Coda Color 2 today from the mid 70s. And so Coda Color 2 was one of the first films to use C41 processing. And so with that being said, this is something you can still go develop and I'm gonna do that here in a little bit. Uh, full disclosure, the uh, video is gonna be a little bit out of order this time because I accidentally already put it in here, forgot to film this opening. And so we're gonna work kind of backwards, but um, by opening it up and then then putting the film back into here and then taking it to the lab. So, uh, but let's do that while we're talking about it. So like I said, uh, Coda Color is going to be the first C41 process film from Kodak. And so before that, you'd had a lot of different kind of processes that were a little bit more, um, I from my understanding, standard to different manufacturers. So if you watched a previous episode where we did the Agfa color, you would see that I had to stand develop it in uh, processing for C41 because I didn't have any chemicals. They didn't make that chemical anymore. So really kind of hard to get it. And, but, uh, oh, come on. <laughs> this is getting stuck in there. So. Uh, but today what we're going to do is I'm going to work backwards with this. We're going to look at this. I've already taken the photos and then you're going to go with me to drop them off at the lab and then we'll see uh, what we have afterwards. Uh, but one of the things I had to play with on this is I had to take this down to ISO 2.5. I had to write this on the back of it. So you'll see ISO 2.5, 2.5. And uh, this film, I believe this one was from 1977. So July of 1977 there. So pretty old, um, did the same kind of thing, one stop per um, uh, one stop per decade to be able to get it. And I think it's all back in there. So let's see, boom, boom. But one of the things that I thought was really cool about this, let's put away the, the camera, is that uh, the canister uh, is kind of like a zebra, but it's also would have been the first one that actually had a process C41 on there, one of the first ones. From my understanding, this camera or this film stock uh, started in the early 70s, and this is 77, so like 71, 72, um, and the C41 uh, process started to take over, and you know that now because you probably do most of your film in C41. Uh, our ASA was 20, or was 40 on this roll, and like I said, I took it down to 2.5 because it's from the 70s, so it was almost five stops. So 40, 20, 10, 5, 2.5 and that's where we got to where it was at. And here uh, that uh, you can develop Code of Color 2 in your own dark room, um, or you can go to a photo dealer. Somebody put in the comments, um, sorry if I forgot who it was at the moment, but the reason that they started putting on all these things that it does not include processing, so film does not include processing by Kodak, that apparently there were some manufacturers that were including it. I think we did Seattle Filmworks, we did a couple other places that were saying you could only develop at their labs, which just wasn't, uh, true. <laughs> you could develop it wherever you had the chemicals. Um, but apparently that ended up being maybe like a lawsuit and uh, that people thought that that was included because earlier on in photographic history, some of those did include it and they had to differentiate it. So um, at this point, I don't know if there's any place out there that includes it unless you buy like a, a kit or a bundle or anything like that. Uh, one last thing, I'm gonna open up the box, see if there's anything written on the inside. Sometimes there's some pretty cool things. Um, this one is fairly modern in terms of um, consistency, but nope, nothing on there. So just color prints, 135, 36 exposures, coat of color two, and, uh, and then our little cheat guide here with um, uh, framing and f-stops and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've already shot this roll of film and uh, I'm actually gonna have to take it to a lab because I don't have any chemicals right now. I'm in the process of moving. So uh, let's jump in the car and take it over there. All right, so I just dropped off the uh, coat of color at Photo Ave here in Los Angeles. So um, what's great is it's only $8 a roll here. So if you're here in the Los Angeles area, you should check it out. It's right in the middle of Hollywood. So I've done a couple things with them. They've been around forever. And so since I ran out of C41 chemicals, I'm dropping that off today. So it'll be done in a couple of days and then we'll look at it. Oh, it's already recording. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to set this up today and a little bit differently uh, because like I said, we're moving. So a lot of my things are already packed away. Um, but one of the things that I think is uh, 
been fun about all of this is like each time I'm trying out something new and I don't know what's going to work. So this time around, I'm actually going to uh, use my iPhone. I'm just going to shoot some raw images and then I'm going to take them into, uh, into Lightroom and see what we can get out of it. So I'm going to set this up and then we're going to start scanning. Too bright. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so we got everything scanned in and today I'm going to go through the Lightroom process with you so you can kind of see everything that's going on. Um, also, I want you to see how faint these images are and what I'm going to try to do to bring them back. Um, I don't know what's really gonna happen and um, uh, while we have gotten some comments down in the comments that these photos are garbage, uh, I'll highlight that one comment. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do laugh about that because this is not about the end result. Um, you've been watching now for probably three or four months. I've done this probably 15 times now. And it was never about the actual end result. It was always about the process and it was always about what it forces me to, to look at that's a little bit different. And um, so thank you for coming on that journey with me and let's look at these photos. Uh, if we go full screen, you can see very, very faint information kind of in here. Looks like maybe a building or a street. And I think I just underexposed these um, because the developing looks great and everything like that. It looks like it all came across the way it needed to be. Um, but like I said, this is from the 70s and this is kind of the first C41. So what we're going to do really quick is I'm just going to um, throw a little crop on them and we're going to develop them and see what we have. So here we go. All right, so we went through Negative Lab Pro, and these are just raw images out of an iPhone. I think I have the 15, uh, so it's a couple years old at this point. And uh, but I, since I put away some of the other scanning tools, I wanted to just see what I could do with that. And uh, also, so you can do this. You may not have all these things that I'm doing. I've been accumulating these over the last 20 years, and uh, even got a printer today, and was so glad that I had a old cable because it wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi, so I had to plug it into my computer for it to connect and uh, but yeah this is a collection over many decades but what we're looking at now are the actual images and like you can actually see some things in here so I'm gonna try this one really quick and see if we can get um, anything to come out of it uh, so it looks like yeah colors good uh, tint we'll figure that out at the end and then uh, keep in mind everything's gonna be kind of like the opposite because we're using Negative Lab Pro and Negative Lab Pro inverts everything because it was off of the negative. Um, you could try to do this beforehand, but you, yeah, we're getting some stuff in there. Uh, let's go back a little bit lower than 300. Let's go to 200. Uh, you can see like houses and you can see buildings. Um, and I really think this is just user error. I think I messed up. And I think I just went a little bit too uh, low. And I'm trying to remember, um, once again, all my notes are kind of scattered everywhere right now. Uh, Okay, so I believe the code of color I had rated at 2.5 ISO, and then I did like one, I did some like one second intervals and things outside, and I wonder if, looks like I probably could have went a lot longer. Once again, I don't know how this was stored. Um, at this point, code, this was 1977, so what were we like 50-ish years? And when you don't know what it's stored or anything like that, um, it's kind of a, a mixed bag. But what I'm going to be able to do with this now is I'm going to play around with some sharpening tools. I'm going to play around with some uh, of the dehaze. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get us something a little bit better. So give me a second here. So we got something similar in there. And the good thing is we have a nice little curve here. Uh, so if we go full screen, you can see houses and you can see some things that are going on here. Um, but it's going to take a little bit more time to finesse it. So what I want to do, uh, and it looks like I actually might have even put it in backwards. This looks like it's backwards. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some interesting stuff in here. And I can already see in the comments, these are technically garbage. This was a roll of film that should have been thrown in the crash. I took it, I took the challenge, I'm trying to make something out of it, and so it's not about the end result, it's just all about the process. And it's all about challenging yourself to see things a little bit differently, to play with things a little bit differently, and also just get your camera out there and go try something. I don't know what this is going to be, I remember where I took all these photos, and I remember where I was standing, and all those things, and in the end that's really all that's important to me, because I wasn't 
even worried about the end results. I was just trying to be present and trying to play around with um, a camera and some techniques. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these edits. I'm gonna get them at the end of the video so you'll be able to check them out and everything. So um, if you made it this far, you must really enjoy the show, which I appreciate. And if you could please like, subscribe, all those kind of things. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by. I hope you have a great day and uh, do something nice for somebody.